So as you can see, daily commuting hassles, difficulty accessing office buildings, or educational institutions, lack of accessible toilets, or lack of study materials in Braille, these are all reasons for people with disabilities opting out of opportunities that should be equally available to all citizens. We don't realize it, but there is a larger cost we're paying for this exclusion, as Den just explained here. To tell us more about this, we'd now like to invite up on stage Ashuni Angari, founder and trustee, Ashuni Angari Trust, Bilaku Academy, and Arman Ali, executive director, National Center for Promotion of Employment for Disabled People. <laughs> All right, so I think we can get started. As I said, Den is my co-anchor, so Den, I'd like you to begin this discussion. I'll just start with Arman. Arman. In the last 20 years, uh, what has been the thing that you saw unexpectedly change in a positive manner? And in the last 20 years, one thing that you thought it would change, but it didn't change. Thank you, uh, thank you Dan. I, I think uh, in the last two decades, what has changed and which is very encouraging is uh, a lot of young people with disabilities have come forward. They are able to articulate their thoughts. They are able to fight for their right. Uh, they do not need any medium. And, and, and also, in the last one uh, decade, I would say, uh, the disability discourse has not remained in metro cities like Delhi or Bombay and so on. I think uh, people, young people with disabilities have started to take up uh, issues at, at the very basic uh, district or, 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 or the village level. What has failed us is is education, employment and accessibility. There is a lot of noise around disability. You find disability to be mentioned in every document that you refer to, whether it is, uh, you know, we talk about a film or you talk about anything which is to do with government or private sector. Uh, but it, it remains an afterthought. Uh, it remains to answer the basic fundamental right like education for all. Uh, employment and accessibility, the freedom to move from one place to another. I think it has not worked. Thank you, Arman. Uh, Ms. Angare, uh, taking context from Arman, just wanted to know that the education dropout for people with disabilities as a whole, what do you think the main reason behind it? Yeah, um, the main uh, uh, issue that we are facing in education is um, mainly lack of accessing technology. So even though we have various uh, types of technology, we are not utilizing it properly and we are not awareing, no, making uh, children um, aware of those technology. That's the main issue. And the, see, I am also running a uh, trust which is mostly, an, uh, most of our trust runs with inclusion. That means I have both visually impaired and non-visually impaired students, they stay together, study together, they fight together, they do everything together. So I encourage our students with visual impairment to go to non-norm, regular uh, schools. So um, they actually, in the beginning, they did not take our students, um, but I convinced them a lot and I spoke about the you know, laws and rights. So now uh, they are so uh, close to um, our, our students. So the main reason is first we should make our um, you know, education system and education institution teachers to be aware of uh, visually impaired uh, uh, or else uh, the children with disabilities and whatever the rights and laws and what are the technology they are utilizing it and everything. Right. And Ashwin, if you just share with us your story as well because uh, you know, with your family and the support you received, you, you were educated and now it's amazing that, you know, you're doing so much to help other children and ensure that they have those skills to deal with life and, and, and get employment. Uh, of course, I am um, from uh, a rural part of Karnataka. So I also um, born with, uh, I always, a great gift of God, that's vision impairment. Um, so I studied, uh, I went to a school uh, called uh, Shiramu Maharshi Academy for the Blind. It's a special school for visually impaired students. So um, then actually my dream was to become a doctor. But uh, 
I could not take science even though I had um, a dream of becoming a doctor. Then I had to took arts. Then I started advocating um, for people with disabilities. I joined Leonard Cheshire Disabilities as a disabled advocate. And I did so much of, you know, I traveled to so many, con uh, so many uh, like states like uh, Delhi, Ranchi, Bhopal, Mumbai. And I could solve so many problems like you know, accessibility education problem and like uh, so women, um, there are many issues uh, faced by women. So those are, those problems are being solved under my leadership and I used to lead one, uh, I'm, I was a leader of 114 youth. So they both are, they are all supported me with you know, uh, making a, uh, you know, solving a problems faced by Women, women and children with disabilities. What are some of the things, like three things that you think could be immediately done by the government? Also earlier, Dan was talking about how the East, you know, he feels a lot more needs to be done there. South India, he, he says, is much better for uh, people with disabilities. See, uh, we have a lesson called, you know, political science. We have a subject called political science. We study, like, Indian constitutional rights and everything. So. Along with the Indian constitutional rights, the UNCRPD and PWD Act and every disability related laws should be uh, studied by our students. So then only our like, disabled are seen in an empathetic way. Otherwise, what happens is uh, we are capable of doing everything, we will be uh, seen in a sympathetic way. I'll, let me give an example what is, you know, uh, sympathetic feeling towards, you uh, know, persons with disability. See, when I was crossing, when I was just crossing the road, some girl came to me and she helped me to cross the road and she took uh, you know, a pic with me. And, uh, and uh, when I went home and I saw her, uh, her on Facebook uh, with the write-up, uh, I did a great job because, you know, I helped her to cross the road. So this oh, is no. a sympathetic feeling. So if I, if a person with able body, if you know, if any person with able body asked you know any any help, will you be taking you no? Know, will you be taking their pic or putting a Facebook you know putting writing in a Facebook? No, because you don't think it as uh, like uh, a help or whatever, but. If you help a person with disabilities, you think you have done a great job or whatever. So this is a difference between empathetic and sympathetic. So if you, if our um, disabled persons should be in an empathetic way, then we should be included on our syllabus. There are many um, community-based services are also um, included in uh, schools, like community project-related services are also been included. The same way, um, the disabled uh, rights and laws should be also included so that it will be um, so, um, no, little uh, the awareness will be built. To make society more aware and inclusive. Yeah. Yes, Dan. Aman, yes. just to uh, take the question, two things that I would like to tell you. First, I would like to tell the language that needs to be propagated on disability. So we all see that people with special needs, people with uh, other things are being to referred as people with disabilities. Why and what is the correct language to be used when uh, interacting to people with disabilities? Could you set some light on that? We also want to talk about the issues of employment and how, how it, you know, we've talked about education, but also employment and what we would like to see corporates and how they should do more in the workplace. Mm. A lot of our energy goes on getting uh, your terminologies right. Okay, and uh, uh, there's no harm if calling a person who's a wheelchair user, the person who's a wheelchair user, you're a gentleman on a wheelchair or a lady on a wheelchair then calling that person as specially abled and exceptionally abled and so on, taking away uh, the reality from them. You know, if you look at uh, the terminology like um, Harijan hasn't solved problems of people who are called Harijan. We still have people who die uh, in our country uh, for manual expenditure. 
Now the, the thing is that in last 75 years of independence of the, our country, have we ever seen one campaign which is talking about people with disability? One campaign which is talking about a lifespan approach on disability? You see uh, um, the school chale hum like the education for all, you see Swachh Bharat Abhiyan, you see Beti Bachao, Beti Padhao, these are all very important. You know, you, you saw campaigns on domestic violence, you saw campaigns on LGBTQ and so on. But you know, AIDS, HIV AIDS, pollution, climate, but have we ever seen anything on disability? Can you put one person on a wheelchair when there's an election making uh, it inclusive? Can you put one person on a wheelchair in any campaign that you have? You don't know what are the needs of disabled people. The needs of disabled people are the same as anybody else in this room. Everybody needs education, everybody needs employment, everybody needs housing, shelter. Uh, so I have yeah. to say, at NDTV, we have done several, you know, programs and, and uh, we've covered this issue quite extensively over my career no, of 20 yeah, years, you know, which is uh, why this partnership, I, I think, works so well. My, my, my deep appreciation for all that and, and even Samarth, I think, is fantastic. But disability is a state subject, okay? And disability sure. needs investment. And it's, 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 and when there's awareness, like Madam is saying, like Dan is saying, you know, that if you include disability in everything that you do, it only makes you a better facility. And, and, and the law is very clear, you know, and, and, and for, again, what like Ma'am was saying, when you look at disability, you think of uh, disability as a welfare and a charity and, a, and, a, and a, to do, but that's not the case. You know, then talked about cost of disability. What is the cost of disability of a person with disability in this country? Despite uh, you paying tax, what is that you get? You're not able to use public transport. You're not able to use any public building, any public places, any product or services in this country. Is it made keeping in mind the need of disabled people? No. So, you know, and, and there's a law for all this. It's not something that I woke up this morning and prepared to say this here. It's, it's part of the law which is passed by the parliament of this country and any product and services has to be disabled friendly. And, and, and there is a need to be more uh, programs like this, Samarth and NDTV's initiative to create more awareness about disabled people. And it is very it's a common sense. India is the most populous country in the world. It will also have the highest number of disabled people in this world. And, and, and who should we be then? All right, here I'd like to tell you a bit more about Samarth by Hyundai and why it's not one of those, you know, flash in the pan initiatives. It is a prolonged yeah. initiative and uh, the eventual aim of Samarth by Hyundai is to effect change. We don't want this just to be a conversation that ends today. We need this to be a movement, as, as we've been hearing from uh -huh. all our panelists today, that looks for mm -hmm. barriers uh, to accessibility, inclusivity, uh, physical or otherwise, it makes us all think about how we can remove them. Action with accountability, that's the idea behind this initiative. But where are these barriers to be found? How can they be removed? And who is responsible for their removal? To answer these questions, Samad by Handa is also conducting an annual survey to assess how accessible public places are, how aware and inclusive the citizens are. So if you could uh, tell us uh, then, uh, where are these places and where are we going to do these surveys? Yes, Hyundai has chosen uh, 20 cities and the span that ranges is Delhi and CR, Maharashtra, West Bengal, Kerala, Karnataka, Madhya Pradesh. That's right, so 20 cities across six states. Now, the findings of this survey will become part of a white paper. Every year thereafter, for three years, we'll revisit those spots to see how they have changed to become more accessible and convenient for those with disabilities. The survey will also take attitudes, perceptions, and mindsets into account to put together a complete picture of how inclusive the city is for those with disabilities. And clearly, through all these conversations we're having today, there's a lot that needs to be done. Actually, uh Samarth by Hyundai is one of the most important programs that I have attended because this program has been co-created with people with disabilities. I have got into calls and that's made some difference. And when you are taking a path of co-creation, it's amazing when you are co-creating with people with disabilities any program that is something that we all would take forward. Thank you for that. 
Gargi, would you like to take forward? Right. Uh, again, about employability, if I can uh, ask you, Arman, uh, that, that's one thing we want to just come back to. Um, three things that need to be done when we talk about you know, more braille signages where, or, or elevators, voice-activated elevators, more ramps, that clearly is something uh, that we need to have more of in our cities, in rural parts. What one of the panelists said earlier is that all of us will have some kind of disability later in life, and so we all need to think about that right now as well for everyone. You know, one thing, you know, Gargi, I must tell you, a disability is not something we should all be scared of. It's not something... Uh, we should all be afraid of. It's, it's, it's uh, part of life. It's one of the human diversities. Now, for employment, I think it's very important that we have a compliance. Uh, the law is very clear. The law says that every establishment with more than 20 employees must have an equal opportunity policy registered at their state with the Commissioner for Disabilities Office. So equal opportunities, like in every, you know, how many established can you think of would have more than 20 employees at the millions of them? And migration is a huge problem for people with disability. They one find it very difficult to migrate from one state to another, another one district to another, one city to another. So I think that's one. Looking at self-employment, where you uh, there is a focus on people with disability, how they can become entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs with disability. How can you create an ecosystem uh, which supports that? Right. And, I'm 